Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zade here with another episode of Zade's Experience. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own kefir at home. That's right. It is super easy. I have one here ready to go. I'm going to show you how all this works. And if you're wondering, what the heck am I wearing in my arms? Come with me, and I'll show you guys exactly what these are for. So first of all guys, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell, that way you guys can notify every time I come up with a video such as this. Now, for the first thing that I wanted to address is what the heck are these? These are called BFR bands. They're blood flow restriction bands. That's what BFR stands for. These are very good in many, many situations, but the reason I like to use them is right now I'm training at home. I'm trying to move as much as I can, and I don't have any weights. I only have a couple of bands, TheraBands that the, my therapist gave me. That way I could work out the muscles such as side lateral raises, 45 degree angle raises, and a couple of other exercises to help me out with my scap with a couple of stuff in my shoulder and all these other things. And another thing that I've been using them for is for arm training. And as you guys can see, pretty good at it. They're working pretty well. But what this ends up simulating is if you're working with a very, very high weight load, this simulates that with the use of a small weight load. So it's pretty cool. I believe the academies in Japan train with these, these blood flow restriction bands, and they get some pretty good results from what I've heard. And I've read a lot of research on them, and I mean, they, they, I've been doing pretty good with a super small amount of weight. And plus, the cool thing is, again, since you're moving such a small amount of weight, your body, it's kind of simulating what you would be doing with a really heavy, heavy weight at a very low weight. So the risk of injury is a lot less. It's a lot better. So, um, so yeah, that's a win-win. So what these do is they restrict the blood flow to a certain body part, to a certain area. The most common areas where you can use these are in your arms, but you can use them in your legs as well. In the part where the hip connects to the leg, that part right there, you can put these, these ones specifically work really well and you can just go ahead and strap them on. So what you do is you, it, they work like a tourniquet, so you'll go ahead and you're, you'll tighten them up here. You'll go ahead, you just pull on this, tighten it up. It's a little hard with one hand and you set it up to the same number. These ones conveniently have a, like a little number here. That way you can record how tight you got them and how if it worked for you or if it didn't. It's super easy to work with and these are super cheap, I believe. The pair of these were like 30 bucks and if you already have a couple of weights at home, you have 15s, 20s and you're trying to do curls, instead of going and buying a set of 40s or something like that, what you can end up doing is just throwing these BFR bands on your arms and that'll simulate a much higher weight for you. They're pretty good. I also use them for my grip. I have a, the captains of crunch, I think, captains of grips. I've been using them with these and these work pretty well with these. If you guys need to pump those forearms, trust me, it works guys. Very, very good alternative to very heavy weights. BFR bands, guys. I'm gonna leave a link down there. I'm not affiliated with Amazon. These are just my personal recommendation. I really, really like these. These are cool. I can't remember. Oh yeah, there, there you go. BFR bands by Blood. Actually, the company didn't put their name on it, which is just different. But again, I'll leave the link down there. The reason why I like these is put them on. They have like this little cool plastic part where you can just pull on that and it'll tighten it up slowly. The band is pretty cool, like the material it's made out of, it's pretty resistant and you can do two things. You can either strap it on top and it'll Velcro or you can put it through the bottom of that little loop. And that works just as well. So I really recommend these. I haven't tried any. If you guys have tried a couple of these VFR bands, leave it down in the comment section and let me know what you guys thought about them, if you liked anything about them in particular, leave it all down there for the rest of your community as well. Okay, so moving on to the main thing, kefir. So as I touted about in many, many, many videos by now, kefir is really good for you. There's a bunch of beneficial stuff 
for in, that kefir has. And the main thing for me is that it just helps me out with my gut so much. It, I, I really do see the difference, guys. It's very noticeable. It's like basically taking digestive enzymes. It really just helps out, like whether you use a post meal or pre meal, like it just really, really helps out. I find that it really works specifically. Um, let's say you ate something, you went out with your family and you ended up eating something that you didn't want to eat, that you shouldn't have been eating, let's say cheesecake or pizza, something like that, you know, and you have kefir right after it really really helps that with that bloating sensation it just feels like it goes in there and it just destroys whatever and i usually feel it within like five minutes of drinking it it's it's a pretty crazy feeling my dad reported the same thing my girlfriend reports the same thing my brother his wife his son and if you have troubles going to the restroom kefir is one of those things that you will really really love I have a couple of friends that used to go to the restroom and they went to when they went to the restroom they would take forever they never had any problems like major problems they just took a very long time and once they started having kefir they said that their time reduced by like a tenth you know like some ridiculous amount like you just sit go and you're out and I know that sounds a little disgusting, but it's the truth. It really, really helps out with your bowel movements. And it's not like diarrhea or anything like that. It's more like everything just kind of moves properly. And once you figure out that that's kind of the way it's supposed to feel when you go to the restroom, when you don't have kefir, you realize, oh, something's not right. So that's the other thing that kefir makes you realize that when things when you start taking it consistently, you start noticing a really, really big change in your body, especially if you take it after like two, three weeks, like you can really start to diagnose if you take it every day after a meal or before a meal, whichever one, take your pick. You, you'll start realizing a couple of things start to change for the better. And then once you go off of it, you will realize, hey, that wasn't like what's going on right now. Also, people with acne, it helps out with acne. It helped out my girlfriend. She was getting a little bit of a breakout every now and then with the kefir that really helped her out. There's a bunch of bunch of benefits, but the main thing I think is here with the carnivore diet, the reason why I'm giving it to you guys, and I know a lot of people might say, oh, that's not carnivore or whatever. Again, I'm not here to win the, the badge of honor of 100% carnivore all the time, only me. No, I'm here to make things as optimal as possible for me and hopefully you guys learn something along the way or hopefully you guys benefit from my journey if the carnivore diet is that super reset on the human body if it's the best elimination diet what you surely want to do right after is reincorporate some really awesome gut bacteria into your gut and this is the perfect way to do it in my opinion fermented foods are the thing to do because basically you'll have a clean slate. If you go ahead and do the carnivore diet for 90 days, say, and then you start reintroducing some of these fermented foods. These fermented foods have probiotics, prebiotics, and postbiotics, which a lot of people don't know about. But there's a huge, huge benefit to be gained from fermented foods, especially after doing a carnivore diet. So my recommendation is use it whilst doing the carnivore diet and you will see a massive, massive difference. I personally see the difference once I start eating my steak or start eating whatever. And if you're having trouble, like maybe you overate for some reason, you were able to eat three, five pounds of meat, no problem and you feel heavy or you feel like you didn't get satiated for whatever the reason, you drink kefir and that thing will help you destroy that protein, those proteins. It also makes meat a little bit more bioavailable and it does, kefir does have a great, great, great assortment of vitamins and minerals, guys. So it's a win-win, I think, in, in all situations and this is why I'm having to do this right now. I have a bunch of kefir here ready. This is all ready to go. I keep it in the fridge all the time. And what the fridge does is it'll just slow down the process. It'll really, really slow down the fermentation process. So basically it's still fermenting in there, but it's way, 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 way slower. So the process is quite simple, guys. All you need to do is grab your kefir. If you already, let's say somebody gave you some kefir grains, you will just have the grains and you should be ready to go. What you do is you go ahead and you put them into a glass container preferably glass i don't like messing with plastic guys so maybe just really invest on a really good um glass container like i have here one of these is pretty good also you can get just a mason jar and that'll work perfectly fine what you'll want to do is if you do get a glass container make sure that the lid is not fully closed when you're going to go ahead and close that so just keep an eye out for that so you go ahead and you put your kefir grains in there and you fill it up with milk 
and that's it. A lot of people will tell you, you have to put one cup per about one tablespoon ratio of kefir grains. I have never measured my kefir grains, but I know once it's done, I know that for me, the time frame that it takes is about two days. And this is what gives it away for me. As you guys can see, there's like, like you can kind of see that the liquid is kind of starting to separate. The reason is the way it's starting to separate from the rest of like the cream and the rest of the stuff from the milk. So that tells me that this is ready, that it's at the point where it's separating already. That's what you want. The longer you leave it outside to ferment, the better it is, the more the benefits start to accumulate. So obviously there's a lot of diminishing returns. So I only do it for 48 hours. After that, it becomes a little bit harder to drink. It becomes a little bit too sour. So if you leave it for one day, it won't be as sour. Second day, it'll be a little bit more sour. And third day, it'll be very, very sour. You leave it on your counter for one to two days, depending on however you guys like it. What you'll end up doing is you just open your jar, grab a strainer, strain your kefir. And what you'll end up with on the strainer is all those little kefir grains will be there. So make sure not to throw those away. Those are gold, guys. So keep those. The liquid that you'll have at the end, that'll be your kefir. And that is good to go, guys. You'll be good to drink that kefir. It's super good for you guys. I, I, I really can't stress it enough. I think out of all the ferments that I found, that's been the biggest one. That's been the one that I've liked the most. That's been the one that's helped me out the most. And if you wanna do it again, you just repeat the process. But let's say you wanted to stop your kefir. You didn't wanna do kefir for the next four or five days. So what you do is, again, you throw your kefir grains inside, you pour milk into it, and then you put it in the fridge. Not on the, on, not on the freezer, on the bottom part, on the bottom fridge. You cover it up, you do the exact same thing. Again, the lid has to be a little loose. Don't fully cover the lid, because otherwise you'll turn that into a grenade and it'll explode, guys. So just loosen up, loosen everything up just a little bit, and you should be good. You leave it in there for four or five days, and that will survive. Remember, these kefir grains are living organisms. If you don't feed them, if you don't give them their proper nutrition, they will die on you. But if you can keep on feeding them continuously, you can basically have them for an indefinite amount of time. Those things will overlive us by far. Microorganisms have been here way longer than we have. And uh, if you guys take a look outside with what's happening in, around the world, I think a couple of them are trying to win. So yeah, that's Kefir 101 guys. If you guys are at home and wanted a little bit of a project right now while on lockdown, this is the perfect project. Get some BFR bands if you're training and maybe get your own kefir grains. I'm going to leave a link down there from where I got my kefir grains. And I think they were really, really good kefir grains. And I really recommend them to all you guys. So I'll leave a link to the BFR bands that I use and I'll leave a link to the kefir grains down there. But in any case, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Sage Experience. Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push the notification bell if you haven't already done so. Definitely, definitely leave a like down there. Let me know what you guys think about the video, if you liked it or not. But be sure to drop a comment down there, guys. But in any case, Zay out. Peace.